Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a review of Axiom's End by Lindsay Ellis. This is part of my Hugo Awards reading project for 2021. Lindsay Ellis is a finalist for the Astounding Award for Best New Writer, which is technically not a Hugo Award, but is voted on and nominated for and everything at the same time as the Hugos. So I don't know why they make that distinction, but they do, so I'm letting you know about it. For those of you who are interested in such things, the Astounding Award is an award that goes to the writer, not to a particular work, and also authors are eligible for two years. So I guess probably the year after their first book came out and then the year after that. So I decided to read in this category for the Hugos this year, so I'm reading one book from each of the authors who are finalists for Best New Writer. Axiom's End is the first in a planned trilogy, the second one is coming out this fall. I may in fact be living under a rock, it has been suggested before, but when the finalists were announced for the award for Best New Writer, I had no idea who Lindsay Ellis was. I didn't know that she was a YouTube personality and a video essayist, and I just really didn't know anything about her. And then shortly after that, there was a bunch of controversy and stuff like that that came out, and I ended up watching a bunch of her videos, and especially the ones that are about Disney and musicals and things, and went down the rabbit hole with that a little bit. But if you are familiar with her content, um, this book is really in a very different vein. Like, I wouldn't have necessarily drawn any connection between her YouTube content and between the kind of book that she's writing. So I did end up watching some of her videos before I ended up reading this book, but in my mind it feels pretty separate. If you've seen her videos before and you don't enjoy her YouTube persona, I don't think the book would particularly bother you, and vice versa. I think if you're really a fan of the kinds of videos she makes, it doesn't necessarily mean you would like her book. I actually ended up reading this book twice for this review. That's not something I usually do, and I did really enjoy it, but I didn't reread it because I loved it so much, I just reread it because the first time I read it was on a plane, and I always feel kind of delirious when I'm reading things on planes, like I don't really trust my memories or my opinions or my feelings. And then after that I actually just waited too long and I wanted to film this review for the Hugo Awards project, otherwise maybe I just would have skipped it. So I reread the book last week and I actually really enjoyed it the second time too, maybe even more. In general I've been rereading a lot more recently and really enjoying it, so I think I'm just kind of in that state of mind as well. Axiom's End is science fiction, kind of. It's really a first contact story that feels like it draws more from science fiction and first contact movies maybe compared to books. It's set in the United States in 2007, kind of in an alternate history, well obviously because we didn't have any aliens as far as I know, but the main character Cora is a recent college dropout. She's the daughter of a Julian Assange-like um, sort of um, whistleblower no, that's the wrong word. Not whistleblower, but like somebody who fled the country and has started a website called The Broken Seal, kind of a WikiLeaks style website, and is leaking all of this sensitive information, and the government is not very pleased with him. His family also seems to feel like he wasn't the greatest guy. He basically abandoned his wife and kids, and they no longer have any relationship with him. So Cora is kind of dealing with what has been the implosion of her family over the past few years. She has a couple younger siblings, she's a character who is seriously adrift in her life. Shortly before the start of the story, her father leaked this government memo that seems to indicate that the government is in contact with or has known about alien life for quite a long time. Cora thinks that this is all a hoax and she's just not interested in anything to do with her father, but she gets drawn in pretty quickly against her will anyway, and uh, eventually becomes basically an interpreter for this alien that she names Ampersand. This leads her to be very much in the middle of events as they unfold in terms of this first contact and the social and political implications of it. To be honest, when I read the synopsis of this book, it didn't seem like something I would pick up. That's one of the fun things about this Hugo Awards project. Every now and then I pick up something that I just never would have tried and it turns out to be really fun or enjoyable, and that was definitely the case with this book. Like I said, I just am usually not that interested in stories about aliens, or at least not aliens making contact on Earth and the consequences. Those just aren't stories that really engage me very much usually. I also feel like this story, um, I could be wrong, but I feel like it had kind of a 
Transformers vibe going on a little bit, but my only exposure to Transformers has actually been um, the Bumblebee movie, which I thought was pretty horrifying, and my husband told me that was actually one of the better made ones, so that's terrifying. So I don't know too much about Transformers, but from what I know, I feel like there are maybe some elements of Transformers in this story, but like played very straight and seriously. The aliens that we meet are an interesting mix between being organic and having some synthetic elements to their bodies, which is kind of interesting. Other than maybe Transformers, I feel like there are probably a lot of references to things in this book that I just completely missed, not being up on the right pop culture or not having seen a lot of movies in this vein or things like that. But even so, I really enjoyed this book and I have a hard time telling you why, because it's definitely outside of what I would normally enjoy, and I can't point to any single element that really made it outstanding to me. I just kind of feel like somehow Ellis knew how to write a book that appealed to the side of me that's just a fan at heart. Maybe not a fan of any particular thing, but it just somehow the story and the pacing and the characters just all hit kind of the right buttons for me. Overall, the pacing is quite fast. There's, it gets a bit slow in the middle, but other than that, it's mostly, mostly action, mostly things happening. So I felt like in that regard, it was quite easy to get through quickly. The focus of the story is really about communication and also just what the consequences would be if there was contact with an advanced alien race, what would the social and political consequences of that be? And what would the consequences be for humanity coming into contact with a more advanced race of beings that doesn't necessarily play by the same morality or view things the same way as humans or even have things in their world or society that are mutually comprehensible. So I feel like it's that, that element of, of language, of communication that Ellis is really exploring in this story. Setting it in 2007 was a really interesting choice. It kind of could have been set at any time, but I think when she wanted to tell something that drew off or was part of actual history, I think 2007 just made more sense in terms of what the politics of that time were like versus today, and also just how information travels and a lot of different things. So I kind of enjoyed that. I can't remember really reading a lot of stories set in the 2000s. I think the the 90s and 80s have been much more, especially in movies, we've seen a lot of movies recently set in the 90s, that's sort of coming back, but the 2000s, I guess, it's still recent, but not that recent. I feel like the characters were fine. The main character, Cora, she's maybe a little bit bland, but I think the dynamic with her family and the sort of weird situation she's in with the famous father adds a little bit of interest, and she really is more of an audience stand-in character. She is sort of experiencing or learning about all these things for the first time, so we get to go on that journey with her. So I think in that regard, that works fine. The aliens were certainly pretty memorable. I'm looking forward to reading the sequels and finding out more about these aliens. I think there's a lot more that's going to get revealed in the future. So I definitely will continue reading this series. It's not something I would have picked up without the prompting of the Hugo Awards project, but I really surprisingly enjoyed it. But honestly, I haven't recommended this book yet to anyone because I still feel kind of mystified by my own enjoyment of it. I feel like it just sort of clicked with something in me as a reader that's very intangible and well there's there's nothing I can point to being particularly spectacular in this book and I also don't have any major complaints. I think it would have just been a kind of yeah that was fine book that I, I wouldn't have normally reviewed but I just Something about it I liked more than that. I don't know, I really liked it. It was enjoyable. So that's my take. Let me know if you've read this book. What did you think of it? I'd love to hear your opinions because this has been a tough one for me to talk about and really think about why I liked it as much as I did. Thanks so much for watching. I know I've been doing a lot of reviews lately, so I'm gonna try to balance that out with some other things, but I hope you'll continue watching.